What's going on guys welcome back to part 13 of building Twitter using UI kit and Google's Firebase. In this part we're going to finish the onboarding process by uploading the profile picture along with the details for the user. Alright so the first thing that you need to do is just go to the dashboard of your app and then hit storage from the drop down menu over here. Basically this is where we're going to store our profile images so hit get started and we're going to start in the production mode for now and as you can see here allow read if false we need to change that um, so basically um, we're going to hit next okay hit done and now you see your all set you can manually upload a file over here and also you can use that to create um, basically like folders from here so basically you can just create a folder like this so images and you can store your images inside this folder all right so right now let's just change the rules from over here so that we can access this database so yeah we're in the production environment right now but we need to change that to true so that we can access the database and store our images and basically that's it for the Firebase part. So right now let's just go back to Xcode to complete the process. All right, so let's go to the profile data form view model over here. And as you can see here, um, we are required to get a display name for the, from the user, a username, a bio, and also we're going to upload the picture and retrieve an avatar path, then use this path along with these other information. So let's just go to the profile data form view controller and over here I'm just going to initialize a new function. I'm going to call that bind views. And just do not forget we're going to call this function right over here inside the view the load method. And over here let me just apply the implementation of this function. So first of all as you can see here we have the display name so we have to um, basically update the view model uh, with the value of the display name so let's just do that so over here I'm just going to say display name text field at target and over here I'm just going to set a selector method so let me call this function did update display name right and then I'm just going to say editing changed so let me first create this function really quick over here. So objective C private func, and basically I'm just going to paste that name over. And here I'm just going to say view model dot display name, and I'm going to set that to basically the display name dot text field dot text. So basically this is how we get every single change inside the text field and publish that over or basically convey that to the display name variable inside my view model. Right, and basically we just need to do the same thing with the username as well. So objective C private func did update username and basically I'm just going to say view model dot username and that is going to be set to the username text field dot text right so yeah dot text as you can see here and over here inside my bind views i just need to do the same thing that i did with the display name text field so username text field dot add target and then self selector did update username without calling the function just a reference to the function and then add editing changed also, uh, if you remember, basically we have also the bio and the image that we need to bind to those views as well. So let me just go back to my um, profile data form view view model. We have binded the display name, the username, and then we just need to bind our bio. And then also we just need to add a new published variable over here. As you can see, Xcode is still um, loading over there. So published var image data. And I'm going to set that to a UI image, an optional UI image, in fact. And then let me just go back to my um, profile data form view model over here. 
and as you can see here we have the display name the username we just need to buy the bio as well but since the bio is actually a text view it's not a text field so it doesn't have this um add target method so basically we're just going to leverage one of the ui kit delegate methods for the text view and let me just go down there and apply this method over here so basically this method is just called text view did change and basically it do it just does the same thing as the um, on editing changed. So basically inside of here, we can have access to the text inside my text view. And basically I can just assign that to my bio over here. I'm not, I'm just uh, looking for the um, variable over there. So whenever you um, change anything inside your bio, then it's just going to update the view model variable over here. So we have everything set and then we just need to bind our um, image view to this image data as well. So let me just go back in here and inside here this function inside my dispatch main function. So um, I just need to say self dot view model dot user or basically I'm sorry image data and I'm just going to set that to myself or basically to the same image over here since I've got the image already. So I'm just whenever I set um, a new image inside my image view, um, inside inside my profile form actually. I'm just going to set that back to my image data so we can keep track if the user has already selected a photo or not. And then we just need to go back to the profile data form view view model. And over here, I'm just going to create a new um, variable over here. So let me just call that variable is for valid and that should be um, boolean variable set to false by default and basically this is going to change according to a function that I'm going to write right now which is basically a validation function. So over here let me just type func validate user profile form and over here we just need to make sure that the user has entered um valid data so over here let me just type guard let display name is equals to display name so basically we're unwrapping this and making sure that the display name dot count is just greater than two and then we can just guard for the username as well so guard username is equals to username and basically make sure that the username count is also greater than two right and we can basically um do the same thing for the bio as well because um i'm not going to restrict all of you from entering um basically your bio whether it's short or maybe long so let bio is just going to be equal to bio as well and over here let me just make sure that my bio is actually um maybe greater than two as well because um no one's going to uh, write a bio made of two letters. Um, basically, this is it for the text values. And over here, I can just make sure that my image data is not actually set to nil. So let or basically image data. How can I do it? So image data. Yes, image data is not equals to nil. Else, we're just going to say is for valid that should be equal to false and basically we're just going to return from here and over here if that um actually passes we just need to set this form valid um variable to true so is form valid we should set that equal to true and over here we just need to leverage this variable um, by binding this variable to my save button inside my profile so whether it's valid then this save button should be enabled and whether it's disabled or basically whether it's false we're just going to set that to um disabled so user cannot actually submit the form unless 100 percent of the data is provided by the user so let me just go back over here to my bind um, function inside my bind views um, function i can just subscribe to this 
um, is form valid variable over here. So basically view model dot um, just interested in the publisher basically. So I'm just going to say is form valid and I'm just going to receive actually my subscription over this. So receive value and as you can see here we get the button state over here. And over here, let me just say uh, capture my weak self. So weak self. And let me say self dot submit button dot is um, is enabled. And as you can see here, we just can set that to my button state over here. Um, we just need also to store our subscription inside my subscriptions set that we have created earlier. And I believe, um, yeah, basically our subscription set is going to be um, my a private variable over here, as I can see. So private var subscription, uh, basically that is going to be a set of any cancelable. And, in, and basically on the initiation of my class, I'm just going to set that to an empty string over here. And down there inside my bind views method, I'm just going to subscribe for that, making, um, sorry, subscribe for the is form valid publisher. And I'm just going to receive this button state. And um, according accordingly, I'm just going to update my submit button over here. Last but not least, I'm just going to uh, make my um, submit button is uh, enabled. So basically, it's just going to be disabled by default over here. And then um, basically, that's it for binding both views. However, um, when we basically um, change anything regarding the display name or the username, we just need to um, toggle or basically fire up this function. So validate user profile form. This is going to be called um, on every change that happens inside my form uh, to keep track of the state of the form actually. So whenever the user has maybe uh, two characters name or anything like this, the button should also uh, be disabled. So that means the validate user profile form function should run um, with every keystroke or basically every single a change inside my profile form and basically we just need to add this function down here inside my view model as well so self dot view model dot validate user for right so i believe that should be working so let me just hit build and run to see uh, if that is actually uh, correct so yeah i believe it should work actually because the logic seems to be correct Nothing wrong with that. So whenever the simulator decides to open. So yeah, as, as you can see here, my submit button is actually disabled by default. So let me just provide my name. So maybe um, Amr and my username. Let me just set that to maybe Amr Sam minus six. And over here, I'm just going to say um, I was developer helping to work for Apple maybe. Yeah, should just spell it right at first. So as you can see here, the submit button is actually disabled because I did not actually provide a um, valid photo yet. So let me just um, open this and maybe I'm going to choose Batman over there. And as you can see here, my submit button is actually enabled and basically I can tap it right now um i believe that, that should be working so as you can see here we just need to handle this click to basically upload this data to google's firebase however there is just a one small step that we need to do before uploading this text uh, variables or basically this text values over here which is basically upload this photo over here so what we're gonna do is basically we're going to leverage the storage a feature of Google's Firebase. We are going to use that to upload the photo. After uploading the photo, we're going to query to get the URL of this photo, which is basically the path of the photo that we're just going to be using for displaying the photo whenever we open the app. And then we're going to take this path of the photo or the URL that we retrieved from Google's Firebase along with those text values and then we're just going to leverage our database manager to store that inside our 
app. We're just going to do this right now. So yes, buckle up because we're going to do this at this moment. So, all right. So basically let's just go to back to the profile data form view model over here, because from here, actually we are going to pass this photo to Google's Firebase. All right. So basically over here inside my networking folder, I'm just going to create a new Swift file. So let me just build and create this file, which is going to be called storage manager. Over here, basically, it's just going to contain um, some functions that are going to be responsible for uploading my photo to Google's Firebase. So over here, let me just import combine, import Firebase, basically storage combine Swift. And basically, we're just going to copy this name over here and create our singleton class. So final class storage manager. And over here, I'm just going to say static let shared is going to be a storage manager as well. And over here, I'm just going to create my function that is going to be responsible for actually uploading my photo to Google's Firebase. All right. So basically, let's just also create a reference to our storage. So let me just type let storage and that's going to be equals to storage, right? We should actually import um, storage over here. So Firebase storage as well. And then we can just set this variable or basically this constant to let storage dot storage. And then we're just going to get the reference for that. All right. So basically we just need to create the function that's going to be uh, responsible for uploading the photo to Google's Firebase. So let me just type func upload profile photo with random ID, which is basically going to be a string. And over here, we're just going to pass the image data itself. So data. And over here, we just need to have a metadata as well. So metadata, which is basically an information that describes the data itself. So um, basically, it's just going to be storage metadata. And over here, we just need to return an any publisher that is going to emit a storage metadata and basically um, and Firebase error, I believe, or basically an error for now. So basically inside this function, I'm just going to retrieve the image data over here. I'm going to rename or basically give a random ID for this image. So basically this is going to be a UUID, which is basically is very random. And uh, basically this is going to be um, the name of your image inside the storage itself or, or inside the bucket, however you want to call it. And then um, once we upload this photo, we're just going to use this random ID. This is why we have generated this ID from outside the function, because we're going to get the URL for this function using that ID back. This function over here, or basically this piece of data over here, we're just going to tell Google's Firebase that we are actually uploading um, a photo is just going to not be a normal file because um, the function that we're going to be using right now is used to upload files to Google's Firebase. So telling that Google, this is not a normal file. This is actually an image. We are going to be able to view this image inside our bucket or inside our storage, as you might say. So let me just create this function really quick over here. All right. So basically, let's just get a reference to my storage over here. And then I'm just going to put this photo actually inside a folder called images. So child images. And I'm basically just going to put this random ID and then append that with JPEG, as you can see here. And then we're just going to put our data to the um, the Google Firebase. So let me just choose the one that returns a future over here. So basically, I'm just going to put my um, image and my metadata is just going to be passed with this function. And over here, I'm just going to erase to any publisher, make sure to type return so that you can read that better. So um, basically, let me just see what our function does. So our function is going to receive a random ID. So this is, is going to be the name of the file 
on Google's storage, which is going to be appended by JPEG. Um, keep in mind, this is not the metadata, the metadata and the content type is going to be passed through this, but this is just the name of an image, which makes sense. And this is going to be the directory inside Google's storage. We're going to put our data with our metadata, and then we're just going to um, erase to any publisher to conform to the function signature over here, as you can see, any publisher that um, returns either storage metadata or error. So let me just go back to my profile data form view view model over here. And then we can just take this image or basically, I'm sorry, this, this is the one and actually create our metadata and pass that through um, our storage manager over here. So over here, let me just say function and then let's just say upload avatar. And over here, we're just going to use this function. So storage manager dot shared dot upload profile photo um, with uh, basically an ID and the image itself and also the storage metadata. And then after we do this, we just need to sync over this. And basically, yes, I'm going to populate this, but first I just need to have this sync uh, set up. So over here, I'm just going to get my completion add the week self as well. And here I'm just going to say the completion is going to be um, the value of basically if case, um, basically a failure. So let error. And over here, I'm just going to say basically um, anything with this error. Um, so let's just type published variable error. And then just going to be an empty string for now. And over here, let me just type self dot error is equals to error dot localized description. So that part is done. And over here, we are just going to retrieve our metadata. So over here, let's just see what this metadata offers. So metadata, and as you can see, we get the um, name of the bucket, which is basically the container that we have our image stored inside. And as you can see here, we can say content type and basically um, things that is really important. And over here, this is the path, which is basically it's not going to be the actual path. Um, the path of this is just going to be, as you can see here um, inside the description, the full path of this object in GS colon dash dash bucket dash path dash two dash object dot txt is just going to be um, path dot to do object. So basically it's just going to be this part of the string, but still we need the URL uh, so that we can actually download this image. All right. So um, basically this, um, these are cool data that we can make use of. However, before we sync, we're just going to um, make a flat map, um, basically um, operator, but let me just uh, initialize those variables real quick. So over here, we just need to uh, create a random ID, which is going to be a UU ID. And basically, we're just going to get a UU ID string. And over here, we can just pass this over. So random ID. And for the data of the image, basically, we can just get the um, basically the data from the image um, itself. So um, maybe I can just do something like guard let image data, and that should be equals to um, image data dot uh, JPEG uh, data compress. So um, as you can see here, JPEG data compre compression quality. Let me just set that basically to 0.5, else we should return. And then we're going to have the image data that we can actually pass over here. And over here, we just need to have our storage meta as well. So let me just say let meta data is just going to be a storage meta data over here. Let me just type here metadata dot content type. So let me just set that to image slash JPEG over here. Let me please make sure to type it as 
um, I'm writing down there. And over here, we can just pass the metadata over there. So metadata. All right. So basically, we have just created this function that is going to basically um, upload our photo. And before we actually sync and finish our network call over here, we just need to append another or basically chain another network call for it, uh, which we're going to pass the um, the path or basically, yes, the path of the image itself that we return from here. As you can see here, the metadata uh, gives us back the path. Uh, we're just going to query Google Firebase one more time for this recently uploaded picture. And then we're going to get the full URL so that we can download this path or basically this photo later. So um, I'm just going to leave this function as it is right now. And basically, let me just go back to my storage manager over here. And I'm just going to create a new function. All right. So basically, let's just create this function really quick. So func get download URL for ID, right? And this is going to be an optional string for now. And first of all, we're just going to unwrap this really quick. So um, let me just say any publisher and this function is going to give me a URL back or basically an error. All right. So over here, let me just uh, unwrap this really quick. But I've, t I've noticed that we still don't have like um, a custom error for storage manager. So let me just create this really quick. So enum fire storage errors. And over here, let me just conform to error. Over here, let me just say, for example, um, invalid image ID. All right. And over here, let me just say um, guard let ID. That's just going to be an ID. Else, we're just going to return a failure publisher over here, which is going to be a fire storage error invalid ID, and then erase to any publisher so that we can confirm to this. Uh, and as you can see here, Firebase storage error is just an error. So yeah, that um, actually works really uh, cool. All right. So basically, we're just going to get a custom reference. So um, basically, um, let me just remove this reference from here. And basically, we can add this reference back in here. And as you might notice that we can actually get a reference with a custom path, which is basically is going to be our ID. And then we can just say download URL, which is going to be uh, the one that returns a future. And here we can just erase to any publisher. So basically, um, this is it for um, this function. Let me just hit return really quick and format this to look even better. And as you can see here, we just need have two functions: one that takes an image with a random ID and it puts this image here to our um, storage inside of Google's Firebase. And after we've done this, we just need to query this this image one more time using its ID, which is this one. And then we are just going to get the reference for this path, basically, which is going to be images slash um, ID. And then here, we're just going to get the download URL and also here erase to publisher. Um, OK, so let's just return to our uh, profile data form view view model. So over here, let me just say um, flat map which is basically I'm going to get my metadata over here. And basically, let me just use this static of the singleton class function that we've done. So storage manager dot shared dot get download URL. And as you can see here, we can actually pass the metadata dot path. This is why I made it like um, an optional so that we can just just directly pass that. All right, so um, let me just really do this really quick. However, I'm just going to copy this. So let me just see um, dot sync. All right, so completion. I'm just going to paste that as it is over here. Capture the weak self. All right, so nothing changes regarding this function. So over here, as you can see, we um, we have received our URL. And let me just store this inside my subscription 
descriptions, which is um which is not available yet inside my view model. So let me just create that real quick. So private var subscriptions, right? And basically, this is going to be a set of any cancelable. I'm pretty sure you guys are familiar with the technique right now. So over here, let me just say subscriptions is going to be where I'm setting this. Um, basically, um, the subscription over here, I'm just getting my URL. So let me just say um, here published variable URL and just going to be um, an optional URL for now. And over here, let me just capture this week self one more time. So week self is just going to be self URL. And basically, this is going to be my URL. All right, so basically um, it's done. All right, so actually if you opened the um, your dashboard for your project over here and tapped on storage, um, basically I've been testing this app um, with myself. So uh, I made this images. However, uh, it's just an empty folder right now. So let me just um, start by actually using this. So um, let me just go back over here to my profile there for view model. Um, no, not the view model actually, but the view controller. And over here, we just need to add a target for the submit button because we forgot to add that already. So over here, let me just say submit button dot add target self selector did tab um, submit. And over here, we're just going to choose touch up inside. Um, so clearly, we just need to upload this uh, or basically create this function really quick. So private func did tap submit and over here let me just say view model and over here um let me just say um i believe i have made this function already um so let me just go back to my profile data form and yes it's called um upload avatar so let me just go back over here so view model dot upload avatar um basically um let me just also, um, as you can see here, uh, yeah, this function actually needs to be marked with the objective C. Um, yes, that should be working. And let me just clear my um, console over here. And let me just go to my storage manager. And over here, we can just add this um, print, I believe. No, it's not there yet. So print, yes, uh, add print after the download URL. Um, and also you can just add this function over here uh, so that you can actually see what is going on inside the console of your app. So let me just hit command R, build and run, hope everything's going to be working because we've been coding for so long without any break. So um, let me just see once my simulator decides to open. So, um, okay, so here's my simulator over here and then uh, we have got our form as you can see. So let's just type on and here is my username. So maybe I'm 96 and here I'm just going to say um, maybe iOS developer. Right. And over here, let me just say um, maybe I'm Batman for this matter. So let me just say submit. And as you can see here, um, basically, we are actually downloading our image. OK, and as you can see here, basically, this is going to be the path of the image that we've got. So basically, I believe that worked correctly. Um, yeah, I believe so. So let me just copy this. Let me just go to Safari and over here, let me just paste that and um, hope that's working. And yes, that is actually working. And if you went back to Google's Firebase, your bucket over here, um, you're going to see the folder that you have created, which is that child. Um, yes, inside the image, as you can see here, images. And over here, you can see your photo. And here is a snapshot of the photo that you have done. So basically, we've been coding for so long. So let me just say that this is going to be um, the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and learned um, so much at this topic, actually. So that's it for this tutorial. If you enjoyed what you just saw, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. And if you have any questions, 
please just leave them in the comment section down below and I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. So once again, that was Amr. Happy coding and stay safe.